Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our nephrology playlist. In the last video, we started talking about acute kidney injury or acute renal failure. In the blood, there is uremia. In the blood, there is azotemia. In the blood, there is hyperkeratinemia. In the urine, there is hypovolemia. And the glomerular filtration rate is toast. I've told you before that acute renal failure has three types and three stages. Today, we shall talk about these three types. Pre-renal, before the kidney, renal or interrenal the problem is inside the kidney or postrenal the problem started after the kidney look at this uremic facies and i might find uremic frosting on the skin please watch the videos in my nephrology playlist in order as well as these specific videos from my labs playlist let's keep it simple back to basics here's computer science there's an input processing unit followed by an output. What's the input to the kidney? Renal artery. What's the processing unit? The kidney itself. And what's the output? Ureter, bladder, urethra. Which means if the problem is here, less blood is reaching the kidney, it's called pre-renal renal failure or pre-renal kidney injury or pre-renal azotemia. If the problem started in the kidney itself, it's called intrarenal azotemia. But if the problem started after the kidney, i.e. in the ureter, bladder, urethra, etc., it's called post-renal kidney injury. Your kidney has gazillion functions, one of which is to get rid of waste products like urea and creatinine. And that's why kidney failure is not fun, because it's the job of the kidney to get rid of the urea by excreting it into the urine. But if the kidney has failed, what's going to happen? Urea will pile up in your blood because the kidney cannot excrete it anymore. And this is called uremia. And since urea is made of nitrogen and the word for nitrogen is azot, we call this disease azotemia. Acute renal failure is the same as acute kidney injury, is the same as acute renal insufficiency or acute renal azotemia. Why acute? Because there is a rapid deterioration of kidney function within days or weeks. Why do you call it injury? Because for the most part, it is reversible. We compared between acute renal failure and chronic renal failure in the previous video. Please pause and review. Remember that acute kidney injury could be pre-renal, intrarenal, or post-renal. If my kidney is toast, serum creatinine will go up because there is no one to excrete it. And my serum blood urea nitrogen will also go up because there is no one to excrete it. What's the normal BUN level in the blood? Less than 18 milligrams per deciliter. And what's the normal creatinine in the blood? Less than 1.2 milligrams per deciliter. Let's say that the average serum BUN is 15 and the average serum creatinine is 1. If I do the BUN to creatinine ratio, 15 to 1 or 15 over 1, you get 15. Also remember that the BUN is partially reabsorbed because the kidney needs that urea to concentrate the urine. So some of that urea is reabsorbed back from the tubule to the interstitium. But serum creatinine is total waste. We gotta excrete it. With that in mind, can you answer the quiz of the previous video? Let me help you. By taking the same filtered amount and going up, up, up until you intersect with graph B, and then you go up, up, up until you intersect with graph A. Which one is excreted more, A or B? Of course, graph A is excreted more because this point is higher than this point on the Y axis. So which one is A? Creatinine. And which one is B? Urea. Why? Because urea is partially reabsorbed, but creatinine is not reabsorbed. It is secreted. If BON is 15 and creatinine is 1, then the ratio is 15 or higher. A normal kidney should reabsorb urea, but not creatinine. That's why the ratio is higher than 1, and that's why the higher, the better. If I have kidney failure, I have accumulation of urea in the blood, uremia. Lots of these waste products are acidic, uremic acidosis. Urea is made of nitrogen, azotemia. GFR is toast, urine volume is toast, BUN and creatinine are high in the blood, which means low in the urine. 
When my kidney fails, all of these toxins accumulate in the blood, adding to the unmeasured anions. See what happens to the unmeasured anions here? They increased. And therefore, the anion gap, which is the difference between the unmeasured anions and unmeasured cations, or this lovely square right here, will enlarge. And you call this high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Acute kidney injury, three causes, three stages. Three causes, pre-renal, intra-renal, and post-renal. Which one is the most common? Pre-renal for sure. Let's talk about intra-renal. What's the cause? Could be a problem in the glomerulus, could be a problem in the tubule, or could be a problem in the interstitium. And sometimes the problem is in the renal vessels. But I just wanted to keep everything in three. And then what are the causes of tubular diseases here? Hypoxic or toxic? I'm not receiving enough blood or I'm being hammered by a freaking toxin, which could be a drug, a heavy metal, or a radio contrast dye. As for the three stages, they are initiation, maintenance, and recovery. What makes a good kidney good? That the serum BON is normal, kept below 18. Serum creatinine is normal, kept below 1.2. BON to creatinine ratio is kept above 15. A good kidney does not waste sodium in the urine. Sodium is precious for your body. So the fractional excretion of sodium should be less than 1%. A good kidney is not wasting sodium in the urine. So the urine sodium is less than 20 milli equivalents per liter. A good kidney is capable of concentrating concentrating the urine, so the urine osmolarity is high, greater than 15, and the urine volume should be between 1 and 2 liters per day, for sure higher than 500 milliliters per day. Now let's talk about pre-renal azotemia, I'm not receiving enough oxygen because I'm not receiving enough blood, versus renal azotemia, I am not receiving enough blood, hypoxic, or I'm being hammered by a toxin. Toxic. Post-renal, usually caused by an obstruction of the outflow. It's a gentle reminder that acute kidney injury might have oliguria, less than 400 or less than 500 ml of urine per day. It could even be anuria, no urine, but it doesn't have to. Some people have acute kidney injury with normal urine volume, believe it or not. All of that gunk is piling up in my blood. Sepsis or septic shock is a common cause. Hypovolemic shock is another common cause. Pre-renal, renal, or post-renal. Pre-renal, blame the renal artery for not bringing enough blood to the kidney. Post-renal, blame the outflow tracts for not draining the urine from the kidney. And intrarenal, blame the glomerulus or the tubule or the interstitium or the renal vessels. Acute renal failure is azotemia, high BUN and creatinine, high anion gap, metabolic acidosis. Causes are three, pre-renal, intrarenal, post-renal. Pre-renal, do not forget the song, no BP, no PP. If your blood pressure is low, you will perfuse the kidney less and you will produce less urine. No BP, no PP. So therefore, any cause of extracellular fluid volume depletion will decrease my blood pressure, which decreases the renal artery perfusion and the kidney will suffer. This is pre-renal azotemia. Because anytime the renal blood flow decreases, the GFR will go down. Examples, congestive heart failure. What if I lost too much blood, hypovolemic shock after a hemorrhage, or third degree burn, where I lose plasma and plasma proteins, like albumin, or over diuresis, because I am a doofus who took too many diuretic drugs, or because my doctor is the real doofus who gave me too many diuretics. It's not just hypovolemic shock, septic shock can also do it, because remember what's the definition of shock in the first place? Inadequate tissue perfusion. There you go. What else? Some drugs decrease kidney perfusion, such as NSAIDs, ACE inhibitors, and angiotensin receptor blockers. Regardless of the cause of pre-renal azotemia, GFR decreases and is decreasing. And if you do not treat it early, it's gonna become intrarenal soon, particularly the high hypoxic or ischemic type. Azotemia for sure and oliguria. Still, the kidney is fine. The renal artery is doofus for not bringing enough blood. But the kidney is still functioning, so it's a good kidney. 
the BUN to creatinine ratio is greater than 15, fraction excretion of sodium is less than 1%, which means the kidney is losing less than 1% of its sodium, which is amazing. Urine osmolality is higher than 500 because a good kidney is capable of concentrating your urine. But then if this is not treated early because the doctor has his head stuck all the way up his sigmoid colon, this will turn to become intrarenal azotemia. Intrarenal azotemia, the kidney is screwed could be because of glomerular disease like glomerulonephritis, i.e. nephritic syndrome, which we have talked about before on this channel in great detail. Remember acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, whether it's caused by good pasture syndrome, lupus nephritis, scleroderma nephritis, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly Wegner's, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis, formerly Churg-Strauss, or microscopic polyangiitis, formerly microscopic polyangiitis. The nephritic syndrome could be caused by IgA disease or IgA nephropathy, and it could be caused by Alport syndrome. Or the problem could be in the tubule. Who damaged the tubule? What's the cause of this acute tubular necrosis? Hypoxic or toxic? What kind of toxin? Could be the radiocontrast dye, like CT scan with contrast, for example. Heavy metal poisoning, like lead poisoning, mercury poisoning. All kinds of heavy metals can absolutely destroy your tubules. Or if I'm a doofus and I take too many minerals, my kidney can handle vitamins for the most part. If I took four pills, five pills, five times the normal recommended amount of vitamins, the kidney can handle it. Although it's not recommended that anyone do this at all. But if I do the same thing with minerals and I overdose on minerals, they can hammer the tubules. Next, medications like aminoglycosides, like expired tetracyclines, can also damage the tubules. What else? Renal vessels, like what? Diabetes and sickle cell disease, or interstitial disease, caused by medications, non-steroidals, penicillin, cephalosporin, sulfonamide, such as sulfamethoxazole, sulfadiazine, etc. Or it could be viruses, or systemic diseases like lupus, Sjogren, and cryoglobulinemia. All of them can lead to renal azotemia. If it's acute tubular necrosis, we can expect to see some casts in the urine, such as muddy brown granular casts. Decreased GFR, even lower than prerenal, way lower than that, azotemia. Increased BUN and creatinine, way higher than prerenal azotemia and oliguria, way worse than the prerenal. Now here the kidney is toast, so that's a bad kidney. The ratio is less than 15, FENA is greater than 2%, and the kidney is unable to concentrate your urine. Bad kidney. How about postrenal azotemia? It's an obstruction after the kidney. Problem in the outflow of the urine from the kidney. For this to happen, you gotta affect both sides. It has to be bilateral. What if I have a stone only in my right ureter? Well, this is bad, but it's not gonna lead to renal failure because your left kidney is fine. But if you want kidney failure, you gotta affect both sides. Or you can affect one side only if you are living with one kidney only. Examples of the obstructions. Stones, maybe a stone in the kidney, the ureter, the urethra. Strictures or adhesions in the ureters or the urethra. Then we have cervical cancer in females and benign prosthetic hyperplasia in males. Both of these conditions will constrict the urethra and decrease the outflow. How about bladder cancer? How about retroperitoneal disease like retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy or retroperitoneal fibrosis? Of course, they can lead to outflow obstruction. Early on, the kidney itself is fine, giving you the features of a good kidney. But later, if this is not corrected, the kidney will be bad. When the kidney is struggling like this, it will appear swollen yet pale, especially in the cortex because the cortex contains the proximal convoluted tubules, the most active tubules in your kidney. In the upcoming videos, we will dig deeper into each topic. We'll talk about the stages of acute tubular necrosis, the diagnosis and management of acute kidney injury. And after that, we'll talk about chronic kidney disease, which can end up with 
end stage renal disease. Quiz time. In hepatorenal syndrome, which is a liver disease that causes a kidney disease, the serum BUN may be normal. What in the name of Zeus's gluteus maximus is this? Can you explain this to me in the comment section? You'll find the answer key in the next video in this nephrology playlist. Today you learned about nephrology. If you want to learn about urology, check out my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Topics like prostatitis, hypospadias, epispadias, ureteropelvic junction obstruction, and much more. Normal kidney function is elaborated in my renal physiology course downloaded at medicosisperfectionalis.com. To learn about base excess, base deficit, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, serum anion gap, serum a smaller gap, urine anion gap, and much more, download my acid base course. If you do not want to download my premium videos and would rather watch them here on YouTube, click the join button, join the highest tier to get instant access to more than 300 premium videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, support my channel here or here. Go to my website to download my notes, courses, and cases. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.